Hi everyone, welcome to Five Good Minutes. I'm Tom Bluffko. Well, there's been a lot of conversation and discussion in the real estate industry this past year about the buyer's use of love letters in real estate transactions. Because of the competitiveness of the market over the past nine months, buyers were trying to find ways to make their offer stand out from the sea of offers that a seller might receive on their home. And just so we're all on the same page, let me give you a brief overview of what I mean when I say real estate love letter. A real estate love letter is written by the buyer and accompanies their offer when delivered to a seller. As you might imagine, the purpose of the love letter is to tug on the seller's heartstrings, to convince the seller to accept the buyer's offer even though it might not be as good as some of the other offers the seller is considering. Buyers will mention how their dog and kids would love to play in the fenced yard, or tell the seller that a certain church or school is within walking distance or the buyer would send a picture of their family complete with that adorable dog and Fluffy the cat. Well, July of this year, the state of Oregon moved to ban the practice of letters from prospective buyers to sellers. Starting in January of 2022, buyers and sellers cannot communicate in any way that will reveal the buyer's race, skin color, sex, religion, sexual orientation, nationality, familial status or marital status. They were concerned that these love letters would give the seller information that may, and I emphasize may, cause the seller to discriminate when it comes to reviewing offers. The National Association of Realtors were quick to support this position taken by Oregon by advising its members to only consider legitimate, non-discriminatory criteria when selling a home. Failing to do so could leave agents in a, quote, a compromised position, unquote. As you might imagine, some agents and brokers were not happy about this development because they use these letters as part of a successful offering strategy. One real estate company was so upset about this new law that they enlisted the services of a law firm to challenge the legality of the new law. Well, the law firm and the suit say that by banning the use of love letters in real estate transactions, it violates the agent's and client's First Amendment rights. They further go on to say that as far as they are aware, there's never been a lawsuit filed by an aggrieved party claiming they were discriminated against because of a real estate love letter. The suit goes on to state that Oregon's legislature cannot broadly prohibit expression because a small portion of it might theoretically prompt some people to violate the law. Well, the battle lines have been drawn. It, it's going to be interesting to see how the case plays out. I think there's going to be a lot of states tuning in for the results of this lawsuit. In my opinion, I'm kind of torn on this one. I think both sides have compelling arguments. I will say this. If you think banning real estate love letters will prevent discrimination in the consideration of an offer, I think you're in dream world. In the year in which we live in, 2021, all a seller has to do is Google the buyer's name on the contract to find out about them. Or do you think the seller might plug the buyer's name into a search box of a social media site and read some of their posts? Or how about reviewing the Ring doorbell camera video when buyers entered the home with their agent in the first place? My point is, even if this law is struck down, it's not going to stop a seller from finding out about who the buyer is. I'm not saying it's right, it's just a fact. So how should you be advising your clients about the use of real estate love letters at this point? Well, the first thing I want to be clear on is that I'm not an attorney and don't want to be one. You should always seek the advice of your broker or legal counsel if and when you choose to use these letters. In the meantime, here are some best practices issued by NAR for using real estate love letters. Number one, advise clients, both buyer and seller, about the risks of love letters. By the way, the time to do this is when you initially meet the buyer and when you are listing the seller's property. Number two, advise your seller clients to assess offers based on objective criteria which terms are more to the seller's advantage? Which contract will net them more money? Number three, if your buyer client does want to write a letter, advise them to use objective, not personal info. And finally, number four, 
As an agent, never draft the love letter for your buyer client. As this case plays out, I'm going to try to keep you updated as best I can. Until next time, all the best.